In this video, I'll be showing you how to download and configure and the basic operations of Astro Image J. So this is the program we'll be using to make measurements of our stars. It's a program that allows us to use the file types that astronomy images come in. You'll note that they are dot fits. Okay, so if we look that up, dot fits, that's a new file format that might be unfamiliar to you, and so we have to have special software that will open it. Software that comes on uh, any other computer typically is going to have a hard time. So that's why we use Astro Image J. So here we go on that. As so what you want to Google, Astro Image, if I could spell, J. Here we go. All right, this top link is probably what you want. You can see I've been there before. So if you click on that, it will take you to the Astro Image J website. So another thing you should know about this software is it is freeware. So the support for it might be a bit more limited than what you'd expect for software you pay for like that uh, for Microsoft Office, for example. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to go down here in this link here that says Download Installation Package. You click on that. Now, this is important to pay attention to. There are actually a couple of things that you should click on. So the first of them is an installation guide by HTML here. So if you click on that, it will give you step-by-step uh, -step instructions of how to install and configure Astro MSJ. I strongly recommend that you open this and read it in addition to downloading the software itself. Okay, so if we go back here to our index, I'm on a Windows right here. Also, you need to have Java installed, so be sure that you've got that installed and running on your computer. This will not work. So these days, uh, mine's a 64-bit architecture, so we're going to click on that, running Windows here. <coughs> All right, we've successfully, successfully downloaded the zip folder. So we open that up. Now we're gonna, of course, want to extract it. So we go up here to extract all. Now, uh, I don't care where you put it, just be sure that you can find that spot when you um, open it up. So I'm gonna put it, what the heck, let's put it on the desktop. Yeah, let's put it on the desktop. Uh, whoops, we're gonna call it um, Astro Image J. Here we go, extracting. All right, and we'll take a little bit of time to extract. There's a lot going on in here. Okay, we've successfully extracted it to this folder. So we're going to click open here, and we can see you know, the application here. That's the guy we're going to click on. So we'll click on that. Give us our first um, run. So it asks us about auto-configuring it. That's okay. All right, so it asks us uh, where to do it. So it's got a successful configuration file. In most instances, you won't have to mess with this. So this is just an FYI kind of a thing. So you can sort of ignore it. And we should see here, you might be asked to allow uh, Java to run on your computer. You should probably do that. All right, after a bit of a delay, here we go. So this is our toolbar. This is our primary toolbar with which we can interact with our images. So first step, you go to File. Now you might think that opening Next or Open Samples might be a good idea, but let's just show you that, in fact, that's really not what we want because uh, those images are not really available. So as for Image J, a little bit of history here that will be helpful to you. Image J was developed to look at medical images. That's why if you look at these samples, they all appear to be biology examples. And we've since adapted ImageJ to be used with astronomy. So that's why uh, none of these images are actually going to be available to us. And furthermore, they're not in the FITS format. So it's opening them was not helpful for you to, to learn anything. OK, so if we go to Recent, uh, if you want to open a single image, that's totally fine. So I, you might have some downloaded. Uh, and once you've opened them in Astro ImageJ, it has a memory of that. So an image might look like this. So here's one. Um, that's similar to the images that you'll receive. You'll notice up here at the top, we have our coordinates already provided for you. So as I move the mouse around in the image, you can see those coordinates change, both the actual coordinates on the sky and the X and Y locations of the pixels on the image. Okay, so this is what your images look like. Another really simple but helpful tool is right here where it says our FITS header. So this file type is useful because all the information about telescope configuration, camera configuration, the date, where in the sky it was pointed, all that stuff is actually embedded within the image itself. So if you click on that, all that information is here. 
So you can see we have keywords. Okay, go away. Um, we have values. Okay, it's getting mad if I click on it. So I'll just hover. But it's got the values, and then importantly over here, we got comments. Okay, that'll help you understand what these numbers actually mean. So more on that later. So those are some of the basic functions for a single image. Now, in our case, we're probably going to be opening a number of images at once. So we will want to talk about how to do that. That is where you go to import image sequence. Now, if you try to do it another way, it will probably crash your computer. So an image sequence is the best way to do this. We're going to go image sequence. Uh, where we're going to look around. Uh, I have a bunch of these in downloads. Okay, now it's going to have a um, ah, bunch of stuff. Don't worry about this. This is all blah, blah, blah. But here we go. We got some fits images. So we got 00382. Okay, so if we open that, um, you'll notice it's got starting one. Um, and how many images is it found? It's from 1900 in, of that type. So that may not be the best way to open them. Uh, because you'll, just, you'll open up, you'll crash your computer, you're dead. It's not going to work. So what you have to do is you have to tell it the pattern to use as we find the proper images. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go here to Downloads, and we're going to look at my FITS images. So the, the ones in question we want to open are these three right here. Okay, so it says 0, 0, 00382. So I'm going to tell that that's the pattern we want. 0, 00382 plus 0304. Now we're also going to throw in a wild card, so that's this asterisk, okay? Mm, never mind, that's not what it wants. Um, so it's got six images. Uh, these other three right here are different file types. We'll see. I'll be curious how it opens them, but we'll see. Here we go. So we open them. Here they are. So you can see that the first one, we got the file name up here, one of six. All right, and we go like this, and here's the next one. Okay, so it's the next guy, two of six up here. And the third one up here, we got um, again our fits image. Our fourth one, all right. So you can see again, we've successfully opened these images um, here for you uh, to look at. So this is how you would open. Now, again, as you might find out in a real setting, perhaps not all of the images turned out. So this one that got clouded over. So this is how you might look at those and find out if you have good images or if you had images that got clouded over. Okay. So a couple other things about the fits. Uh, or sorry about Astro Image J. You need to ensure that you're using the most recent version. So you go to help, you go to about Astro Image J at the very bottom. And you can see that this is Astro Image J 3.2.0. This is actually not the newest. So if we want to update that, we're going to update Astro Image J. And I can update it to any of these newer versions. The daily build actually is what you want to click on, and it will update it to whatever the most recent version is. Okay, it'll take just a minute to do that. You can see the progress bar here below the toolbar. And it'll close it down once it's completed updating. And then you'll have to open it back up again. So now that I've installed it, again, you can go back to wherever you uh, put it. So I believe I put it on the desktop, uh, but I hid that for myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to go the old fashioned way. We're going to type Astro J in the start menu, click on that, and here's Astro MSJ open back up. So now I check my my version, and you can see it's updated it to 3.4.025. So this is the newest version for Windows. So there's your basic download and configuration instructions for Astro MSJ. Now, one final thing that you might want to check, okay, uh, we want to go to Edit, I believe it's under Options. Okay, we want to look at memory and threads. So it's possible that when it is first downloaded and installed, Astro Image J is not configured properly to use all of the memory that it might need. And if it uses more memory than it's allowed to, you're going to have errors. So if you click on this, uh, 640 megabytes, that should work. If you're finding that it's not, you can crank it up. So if I say 1,000 and I say OK, then I have to restart it. And that will allow me to have more memory for loading up a bunch of astronomy pictures. So now if I look, again, I go to Options, I go to Memory and Threads, and you can see that my change has, in fact, taken effect.